to the eternally curious, unapologetically superstitious Midnight Society rejects, Stormy Willow welcomes you. We are the eccentric coots, storytellers, explorers, dabblers, practitioners, and paranormal pupils who examine the what's ifs, the what's that's, and WTFs of this dimension and beyond. Hey weirdos, a friendly disclaimer from Stormy Willow. Listener discretion is advised. This episode includes death, dismemberment, animal attacks, plane crashes, murder, car accidents, and suicide. This is the Stormy Willow podcast, a lighthearted balanced examination of the paranormal. I am your host Adele. I'm Sarah. And welcome to the show. Hopefully we have a good one for you and you made it through last week. <laughs> <laughs> wow, right? Like, how are you feeling? How are you doing? You know, I did something constructive. I started making my Halloween village for this coming Halloween and that actually made me feel a lot better. Yeah, uh, it is I made so cute. Clay- yeah, I'll post some pictures on social, but like I'm making little clay monsters it's really like taking my mind off things so yeah you have to i i have found myself getting very consumed by it and having periods of just um just kind of depression and sadness and then like bouts of anger and so i got out for a nice run with some friends yesterday and it was just really therapeutic to pound some pavement and have funny stories to share and you know just kind of get yeah. out of my my phone because it's just it comes in waves like it's a weird it's just a weird thing it to does and if you don't know what we're talking about we're hopefully very obviously talking we're talking about, about the elephant wage. in the rain <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're talking about restrictions of rights passed across the nation from this completely biased out of control supreme court and could we say unsupreme court don't i mean they shouldn't be supreme yeah. court when i think about supremes i think about Supremes, the great, the musical group. I think about obviously Chicken Supremes from Bojangles, which is a wonderful thing. <laughs> I think about Office the Supreme, Supreme from American Horror Story. Yeah, so I mean, you are not the Supreme Court anymore in my book. You're just no. the court. You're just, you're just the man, is what you are. <laughs> yeah, you're not. There's nothing supreme about it. So I ordered this really cute flag. I can't wait. It's like really like flowery and stuff, and it says "Mind Your Own Uterus." I can't wait to hang that on the front porch. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> yeah, Amanda sent her cute little uh, coat hanger things out yes. to the Supreme Court justice. <laughs> nice, nice. I thought about for the fourth. We usually have this little corny flag we always hang up, and it's like a uh, a flag of like this dog that looks like Herman, and like in the back of a truck with like you know a little like American flag, and like that's my one out this year. We might just, I think about putting just a close, um, close hanger with the big red, white, and blue, um, pretty bow that mom could construct for me. <laughs> that, that, there you go. We, you know, we never decorated for 4th of July anyway, so it's, yeah. it's going to be the same for us. Like, yeah. Right on. Just nothing. It just kind of stings. Well, it already, I don't know, I, as I've gotten older, especially living in New Mexico with a lot more indigenous people, like Thanksgiving, I have a really oh. hard time celebrating, and Fourth of July has kind of been one of those same things that's, that I've been struggling with. I'm like, I just I, I want to do that with whenever I'm seeing what's happened to these people firsthand. And yeah, just and they're I like, you just finally got. They're probably just like you. We're just you know, and I, I kind of feel bad because I feel into a, a lot of um, just you know, um, just black and brown people, and it's like. Yeah, they're hurting for us. We're like, but this is not new for us. And it kind of makes me feel a little selfish because, like, yeah, like, I, I've been out there with Black Lives Matter. I've been writing my, you know, my representatives about that Black Lives Matter. But I haven't ever actually stood in their shoes 100% until, I feel like, last week. Yeah. I mean, and I feel like I, I mean, yeah, I, I can assume what it felt like, but until your rights are taken away, you really don't know. And um, and I'm not saying that you can compare what I've gone through this week compared to their journey, because 
you know, right now I'm not getting arrested for the color of my skin or, you know, I can walk down the street without, you know, at 4.30 in the morning and they just assume I'm out exercising and, you know, that sort of stuff. But it does like put into perspective, like, oh God, like this sucks. Like until everybody is free, I don't want to celebrate any of that. I agree. So then especially like indigenous people, like, you know, they're the original um, folks we came here and stole this land from. So yeah, good times, good holidays. Exactly. So I'm kind (laughs) of like, "Mm." You know, this is just icing on the cake for me really not wanting to partake in those two holidays yeah. anymore. Yeah. And I heard a lady on TikTok talk about, and I did not think about this, but it really hit home just because I was probably already in a depressed state and this is just really sad. So this lady was talking about how with these school shootings, how um, these children that have survived that or have been, can't um, say it, PTSD. PTSD syndrome and the sounds of the fireworks are really unthoughtful oh. for them as well. And that was like, oh, you know, I had always heard that about the veterans, you know, having yeah. that being the a, a thing and the dogs. But I, you know, now we got to contend with, you know, folks that have gone through this horrific massacre, a woman through a school shooting. So it's just, it's not good. Oh, it's just not good. It's just very depressing. It makes me very sad. Um, the state of our country. Yeah. I mean, state of the world. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. This will be the last soapbox thing, but yes. even the Supreme Court can't side with planet Earth. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad you said that. I was also about to uh, say that as well. So, yeah, guys, um, we might be living in end times. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Oh, but CERN. um, I don't. Have you heard of CERN? No. Like this. uh, I'm gonna do a horrible job. So sorry. I I still don't quite understand what it is. But I think it's like a nuclear reactor in Switzerland. They're supposed to be turning that on full force on the fifth of July. Um, So they've already done some experiments a few years ago. So what they're trying to understand is really the makeup of our universe. And if they could make a mini black hole, that would be great. It's kind of what they're aiming for to understand more about what makes up our universe and how it works. But some people are saying that maybe it's messing up our timelines and we're like time hopping and we're going to have more mandala effects and and, and things like that. So could, could possibly and it's gonna be far-fetched you see on my board i made a note to myself that cern july (laughs) 5th 2022 so on the 5th i walk in and have no idea what that means (laughs) maybe i'll have to clue for myself i was thinking could this mean that we've already slipped into that time warp and maybe we just went back it's like maybe this will maybe on the supreme court just like it's not us like we're being taken over by like a time warp (laughs) <laughs> or it's like bizarro world yeah, yeah. that's what some people okay. are saying so that might give me a little ho- like hope of like maybe explanation i think the last time they did <laughs> some experiment was like 2016 ish what um, weird but then they were like they closed down for a while to like update their equipment supposedly so i don't know wow. let's get ready get for some funky things on july 5th potentially how does one get involved in that kind of work? That's pretty fascinating. They're all like, so uh, oh yeah, they're all scientists, but like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. They're like, let's but it just is start scary. colliding particles. <laughs> it's just, it's just like, At this point, what could they lose? Let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> well, I or mean, they'll do us all a favor and maybe the world ends on July 5th. I don't know. Oh <laughs> God. Oh man. Well, speaking of that, hopefully, um, if you're still here after July 5th, there'll be some fun events for you to attend. <laughs> I figured that would be a great segue. That's a good one. Yeah. To the events here. Uh, and I am going to start out with one in Abbeville, South Carolina, of all places. I don't even know where that is. It's, yeah, like, I don't really know either, but on July 8th from 6 to 9 at the Belmont Inn, they're having a Paranormal 101 investigating event. Ooh, How that sounds cool fun. Is that? So they've got some professionals that'll kind of give you some one-on-one um, courses on Paranormal investigating. So I thought that sounded really freaking awesome. And then on July the 12th at 7.30 p.m., um, Adele, I did this one for you. This is um, going to be in Dorchester Square in Montreal, Canada. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a paranormal inv- investigation of an old St. Antoine cemetery, Ooh. which sounds hella cool. 
And then um, just to kind of go along, I know we always talk about paranormal type investigating weird things, but just wanted to tell you, if you go to bands off our bodies at Planned Parenthood dot um, or I'm sorry, PlannedParenthoodAction.org, you could find planned organized protests all in your area across the nation and around the world that you can get involved in, ways that um, you can speak out and help um you know raise your voice uh for this tragedy that's happened uh that have um they also do a really good job of keeping like lab updates and it's um the information is credible so it, it might be a cool site to maybe have in your favorites these next few days i also wanted to mention because we do have the fourth of july coming up um, a lot of us um, I have seen we will be wearing black on 4th of July um, for our protest um, against what's happened. And there's also going to be women, which I think this is so cool, not just in America, but all over the world um, on July the um, 3rd through the 5th. We are not buying anything from any huge retailers. We're not buying gas. A lot of women are not working and we're just going to show the world as a force how much we do matter and try to hit them where it counts. So if you do need to go shopping on the third through the fifth, hit up your local farmer's markets, hit up your local businesses, try to stay away from the heavily funded ones and um, let's try to make an impact where it counts. Sounds good. And everybody's going to also, I think just turn like on your Facebook pages, Instagram or whatnot, social media, media, they're just going to do a red light for like a red period. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so uh, really awesome ways to get involved and show your support. And the one thing, the one positive thing I do want to say about all this shit that has gone down is I am so fucking amazed at how not just women in America, but women all around the fucking world are banding together and saying this is not OK. So uh, if we have any listeners um, in other countries, we just want to say thank you as women um, for your support. Uh, we we're feeling your love and we just we thank you. It, mean, it means a lot to me. And I know it means a lot to all of us here that are fighting uh, to get our rights back so it's a huge huge thank you don't stop we need it yeah absolutely but those um, are our fun events <laughs> yeah hey good stuff yeah. um <laughs> i guess uh it's gonna be like a crimson tide all over social media the next right few days, huh? <laughs> I, listen i'm here for it i love it i love it i will be do- we will be doing it we'll um i'll make a note we'll we'll do it with the stormy willow pages as well so um yeah. as many of us that can band together i mean we have to right now yeah sounds good um i guess that will take us into the forecast so we can maybe see what how some of these events might turn out if we're all yeah. still here after the fifth right <laughs> <laughs> i want to see what, like, what the forecast says for the fifth oh i didn't go to the fifth actually <laughs> <laughs> i tried to keep it just to this week and there was no astrological thing happening on the fifth yeah okay that we know so, of. i don't know maybe there will be now <laughs> yeah who knows maybe the stars will change <laughs> on the fifth oh that would be crazy <laughs> um so july 1st uh mars is in aries square and pluto is in capricorn and this forms a tense angle now i have no idea what that really means but according to cosmopolitan magazine <laughs> this may stir some drama and oh, your no. dark side may show. Oh, hell. Look so, out, world. Here we go. And then <laughs> 4th of July, two events. Uh, Mars enters Taurus. So this is all about pleasure seeking. And you have stamina from Taurus to really go get what you want. All so right. I'll take that. And yeah. Mercury enters Cancer. So you're going to feel nostalgic and start thinking about the past, which... If you are not watching, I'm wearing my old emo hat today. Like I'm already feeling that and I have my bangs kind of down. I was wearing my aviator glasses. So it's like, I'm kicking it like back when I was in college today. That's so funny because we were listening to like really good nineties jams today and feeling it at our workout. So yeah, Yeah. there's definitely nostalgia vibe in the air. (laughs) Feel that. And um, you also may be more sensitive to nonverbal communication. Um, So definitely those cancer feelings um, still, still in the air. And, and that's all I have. And then we'll see what happens after CERN to experiment yeah. on uh, July 5th. That is crazy, Adele. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
I really, and it's like, oh, and also an event, you probably already know, well, you don't, because I know, you, you know, it's too trendy for you, but uh, new Stranger Things today, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe things are going to get strange here. <laughs> yeah, well, when you're talking about that, I was like, that's not a little Stranger Things, like, to me, I'm a little. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess all of that being said, if I recall correctly from last week when we spun the wheel that your topic was curses. Yes, you are you you remembered correctly. So <laughs> when I was researching what to do on this topic, um, so every Monday I listen to our podcast that we recently put out and you actually gave me the idea uh, for this, not knowing that you did. Really? And yeah, so I'm like, this could be a really fun topic to do. And so today's topic is going to be on cursed movie sets. Oh, fun, fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I kind of went like a different way with it because you know we've been talking about some stories that inspired some, you know, pretty crazy horror movies and films, and uh, two of the things we talked about recently that have been um, rumored to have been cursed. So yeah. how I've done it is I've broken it down. I've got I've got five movies we're going to talk about. And I'll just kind of give you a premise of what the movie was about in case any of you haven't watched it or if it's been a long time since you've watched it. And then I'm going to tell you the tales of what supposedly took place on these sets. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to start off with um, Poltergeist. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a good one. Yes. So um, my source for this one comes from www.biography.com. And um, just to give you a quick synopsis, if it's been a while or if you haven't seen it, it was released in my birth year of 1982. And it was originally um, directed by Toby Hooper and produced by the one and only Steven Spielberg. Um, so, of course, this is considered to be like a masterpiece for collection and the film focuses on the family their last name um, are the Freelands and they're just like this middle upper class family um, whose life gets turned upside down when a number of paranormal and um, crazy events occur in their new California home and their daughter Carol Ann is abducted in her um, it, through her bedroom closet by a group of ghosts. And the monster demon is called the beast is what they call like this entity that has her. And so basically after they find out that their new home sits on top of a Native American burial ground, the family spends their time attempting to retrieve their daughter that the beast has stolen and also try to, you know, get to safety and you know they get pretty beat up by all these entities and all this crazy stuff happens so uh, if you haven't seen it it's a great film um Steven I hadn't seen it in years and years like to the point where I had just kind of forgotten and so last Halloween like we'll do like 31 days scary movies and Steven picked this one and we ended up doing the whole trilogy and I I enjoyed it it was great um so here are the spooky things that happened for real so four cast members died during and soon after the, the whole series wrapped up. So two of the tragic deaths were highly unexpected, leading many fan fans to basically speculate that, oh no, like this, there's got to be a curse, right? So the one you may be the most familiar with is Heather O'Rourke, and that is the actress who played Carol Ann. And so, um, so she basically was only so she was only six years old whenever this movie and she was just so adorable she's <laughs> so stinking cute and you know, she's got like the stick straight blonde hair big wide eyes and just absolutely yeah. adorable like you just want to like keep her up yeah. yes and so obviously audiences just loved her you know she was such a sweet little character um but this is so this is so messed up you guys so she was um, misdiagnosed with Crohn's disease in 1987, your birth year. And then the following year, she got really sick again, and her symptoms were casually attributed to the flu. And then a day later, she collapsed and suffered a cardiac arrest. 
And then after being airlifted to a children's hospital in San Diego, she passed away during an operation to correct a bowel obstruction. Ooh, a bowel so obstruction. That's pretty. What the hell caused that? Crazy. And it says that it was later believed that she had basically had this, um, but she was just misdiagnosed, that she had been suffering from this intestinal abnormality from the very beginning. Oh, did she, did she have sepsis or whatever? Did, like, did her blood get poisoned? Point, I bet. That's so horrible. That's the very tragic death. Um, and that's the one that, you know, a lot of people know when they see that movie, that's something they know. But what you may not know is the um, Dominique, and I'm probably going to say the name wrong. I think it's Dune uh, or Dune, Dune, D-U-N-N-E. Um, but she played the original older sister, Dana. And she met an also equally tragic, um, unforeseen death in 1982. So she was separated from her partner, uh, John Sweeney. And in November of 1982, he just shows up at her house, pleads her to take him back. And when she refused, he strangled her to death Whoa. and just leaves her there in her, home, in her Hollywood home driveway. Here's the part that's really fucked up. This guy only got six and a half years in prison, but was released at three years and seven months. How is that possible? People are in there right. order for pot. Yeah. He our, like murders her. Our, our our justice God. system, people. Yeah. Our supreme justice system at its finest. What a joke. And then there's also um, Julian Beck and Will Sampson. And there are two other cast members, um, and their deaths um, were unfortunate, but they weren't as, like, bizarre or as unpredictable as the other two. So um, the first um, was the evil preacher, Cain, from Poltergeist. Um, he, that's who Julian Beck played. And in 1983, he was diagnosed with stomach cancer. So that took his life after they finished uh, the second installment of the series. And I think he was on the second installment. Um, and then the same um, film was met with further tragedy after Will Sampson. This, I think you guys will remember him. He played Taylor, who was the Native American shaman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he died after undergoing a heart lung transplant. God, he needed that in the first place. That's right. already like Isn't that pretty messed up. So that's four deaths um, associated and very close to the it was, it was still filming you know um other odd things that happened on the set so um <laughs> so uh, you may have heard um about how so joe beth williams she was the mom okay she played diane and you may have heard of this or you may not but she said that the director steven spielberg and used actual human skeletons which you know we, yeah. i think we talked about that last week mm -hmm. um because it was cheaper than getting plastic skeletons. So mm -hmm. she personally felt that this really opened up a curse. That she, it just was she didn't really... know those were real skeletons in the filming of the pool scene. Yes. And they're like all yes. over her. She thought they were yes. dummies and they didn't tell her they were real until after. That's pretty She feels up. like that cursed the whole set. That that was just very um it just wasn't a good thing to do and yeah, so yeah it's icky to, you know I have to agree with her like that's very icky and then so finally in an effort to creep out everyone involved Samson who passed away the uh the Native American uh that we were talking about that did the uh the shaman that did all mm -hmm. the healing so to creep out people even more he really is in real life he was um a medicine man and so he actually performed an authentic exorcism after shooting one night. And so she said she felt like that also caused a curse and some just bad juju. Ooh. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. So in addition to the four deaths of Ultra Guys, you have the live cadavers and you have a real well not exorcism. live. Not yeah. live, but you know, <laughs> not the opposite of live. You're dealing with <laughs> You're dealing with live skeletons, I guess you could say. <laughs> You're not dealing with the plastic stuff. And so you've got these, you've got real skeletons and you've got um, a medicine man performing an exorcism. So yeah, what do you think? You think culture ice? Do you think it could be cursed? 
I, you know, I think it's, I would like to know if Steven Spielberg has experienced any weirdness. Um, I'm really glad nothing bad ha- happened to Zelda, though. Yeah. I, I love some Zelda Rubenstein. And if you she don't know who we're talking about, you have to see the movie. She's the best. <laughs> she is. You also know her from films such as Teen Witch. I knew you were going there. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and 16 Candles. (laughs) We'll probably put Teen Witch on our 31 Days of Halloween. (laughs) Oh, yes, yes. Because her little brother, Max, is the creepiest person I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. Is his name Max? Was it Max? I don't know. I don't know. But we're adding it on the 31 Days of Halloween. We're saying Max. I, I guess we're doing. So, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, but she's also uh, this movie really put her on the map as well. She's I think she's so adorable. I'll, uh, she passed away not too terribly long ago, but I love her. She's amazing. So going on to number two. Now this one, guys, is said to be oh it was the- Richie Richie Miller. Richie. That's right, yeah. Richie Miller. Richie Miller. I don't know why I was thinking it was Max. It, was it must be some Richie. other little shit. <laughs> yeah, Richie Miller. Yes, I thought, Max doesn't sound right, but yeah, Richie. <laughs> so the next one is said to be the world's most cursed film production ever wow and it's not poltergeist and it's not poltergeist it's the omen Ooh. okay yeah so i'm well, gonna is so, there any film that's not a horror film that's cursed yeah i'm gonna tell you one <laughs> okay all right i'm curious to hear. It's, it's shag isn't it <laughs> How did you know? No, but you're going to be surprised. You're going to be really okay. like, I fell on the side of my chair. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I saved that one for last. Man, you're always like, you're always ruining my spoilers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, maybe I'm a little bit psychic. I don't know. Yeah. We maybe learned that I'm a know. mystic. Maybe That's I'm working true. on my psychic powers. That is true. Maybe maybe this already happened. It's the Stern experiment. And you I just already knew. Remember it. Like I already know. <laughs> you, I've, I've been here before. So this may be the omen. I got all of my information for this at www.ranker.com. Not Ranker, but Ranker. <laughs> I like Ranker. Or is it Ranker? I, I don't know. Ranker, rank. Uh, yeah, it's R-A-N-K-E-R if you can't follow. Maybe I'm thinking British people say Ranker. <laughs> yeah, you may not be able to follow my thick accent. So there, there you go. But just to give you a brief synopsis of The Omen, of also The Omen is considered to have one of the worst movie curses of all time, as I mentioned before. So Jeez. it's a 1976 film, and it tells the story of a man who accidentally adopts the Antichrist as his son. <laughs> and the <Whoops>. movie remains... <laughs> oopsies and the movie remains one of horror's most successful franchises to this day so i mean you know just trying to do something good it was cursed i I did not either but this movie is why i always thought the name damien was like evil (laughs) you might really feel like that after i tell you more about this i I have two pages of notes just on the curses on this this one is fun Nothing crazy. against any Damien's out there. I think it's a really cool sounding name, but as a kid, I don't know, it's somehow like translated in my mind that that name was like Lucifer. Yeah. It's like, oh, Damien, no. Why would you name your son that? Yeah. Yeah. You, you're fan of the Omen. <laughs> so the Omen film set um, includes death, injury, lots of lightning bolts, and the creator himself warned the cast and crew that Satan wasn't going to like what they were doing. <laughs> what? what is that? Why would Satan not like that? Well, this is why he says what happened, but um, he feels like he was misrepresented. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said it's because you're bringing it to light. So, um, so even the sequel had some issues, but anyway, I'm going to tell you, it, it says that, um, it says that this movie and the remake could have angered Satan himself. And I, I have a quote about it. So just hang on. Know. to put a, so- put a pin in that. Right, I am. I, just I, wait. I'm We're just going to zip my yeah. lips and sit quiet. We're coming back to it. So 
Um, so after helping create special effects for the Omen, designer John Richardson began work on a bridge. He was on location all the way in freaking Holland, and his wife, and who was also a special effects sculptress, Liz Moore, were driving along an empty road one night and hit a car head on. Richardson was knocked unconscious, but Moore was decapitated when one of the front wheels tore through the floor and hit her. Ooh. Richardson came um, to, like, you know, he was knocked out, so he came to after the crash and noted the tragedy was a, que- a creepy coincidence because it was a gruesome um, decapitation scene he had designed for the omen. So basically, that this de- decapitation Ooh. scene he designed for the omen happened to his, his wife. That's really weird. Yeah. He said he also claims that he saw a road sign um, at the side of the accident that pointed to the town of Omen and was 66.6 kilometers away. Whoa, that just gave me like chills. That's so creepy. So that's one. Okay. Moving wow. on. That That's quite an <laughs> omen, you know? Like... Yeah, yeah. Oof. In one chilling scene from The Omen, Lee Remick, that's the boy's, Damien's mother, is completely terrified by a group of baboons who attack the car in a reaction to her demonic son. So according to Richard Donner, her her fearful screaming was real. Listen to how messed up this is. The crew had placed a baboon inside the car to make the attacking primates more angry and then filmed her violent, their violent response. Whoa, that's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Although Remick's incident could have easily become a deadly one, right? Baboons, (laughs) Um, man, they don't play. No. Apparently, Satan chose to take his wrath out on the baboon's trainer instead. Some stories claim it was a lion, but in the words of the producer, Harvey Bernhard, he was killed the day after they shot there, and he was killed by a tiger. The tiger grabbed him by the head and killed him instantly. Jeez. Number two. I thought you were going to say the baboons killed him. Yeah, I, that's uh, apparently that's a miss. I guess. I, I it guess was a tiger. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a tiger. Good grief. Ugh. I know. I've got goosebumps. I, I had no this idea this film. This one's this creepy. One's bad. This one's this horrible. Like, really I don't creepy. even know that I really want to watch this. Like, I, I don't even I know just, if I have watched it. I just added it on my Halloween list. Oh, I'm a little scared, too. Like, I mean, it's, it's um, this is the worst. And you're going you know, you're gonna to see why it has this name. Because we still have several more incidents that happen. October 1975. One of my favorite actors, Gregory Peck, we know him as Atticus Finch, but he was on a London bound airplane on his way to filming when his aircraft was struck by lightning. The bolt caused one of the engines to catch fire and the plane came very close to crashing into the Atlantic Ocean. A few weeks later, the producer, Macy Newfield, was on his way to shoot when his airplane also got attacked. <laughs> Or sorry, struck. I got attacked. That's the most American thing. I got attacked <laughs> by lightning. I got attacked by lightning. He was also struck by lightning <laughs> while crossing the Atlantic. And so he says it was the roughest five minutes he had ever had on the airliner. He noted two lightning-related pre-production mishaps or creepy, but after the screenwriter David Seltzer wrote on an airplane and also got struck by lightning, evidence of a curse seemed to be appearing. I mean, three different people involved in one movie, traveling three different times, three different airlines all three get struck by lightning that's pretty creepy i would say um it's and then if that's not enough so you got the airplanes the three planes get struck by lightning then the producer harvey bernard came extremely close to actually getting struck by lightning while he was filming in rome (laughs) so that's four lightning incidents so I just looked up the odds of having your plane struck by lightning, and it's 0.18 in one million. And this happened three times, like and plus less than one percent. Plus four, if you consider the lightning that almost struck the producer. So that's 
that's uncanny. So that, we've that's had, statistically significant. <laughs> so we've had just in like the few minutes we've been talking, we've had a decapitation with omen signs all around it. We've had the animal person attacked by a tiger and died. We've had three lightning incidents with Lane and the producer almost struck down by lightning. And we're still not even halfway finished. <laughs> the shit that happened here. They didn't make a sequel, did they? No, but I did do a remake and this shit went down on that one too. Oh, so I'm shit. just like, yeah, ah. they should have. You know what? They fucked around and found out is what they did with the <laughs> second one. <laughs> the remake. Oh my God. All right. So you ready to dig into more of the omens curse set? <laughs> yeah. So one of the omens most memorable scenes involves Gregory Peck trying to escape the cemetery while being attacked by a group of vicious dogs. And so several carefully trained Rottweilers were utilized, obviously, for this, and they were instructed to attack a stuntman in Peck's place. And the stuntman was like safely enclosed in a protective wear that they had. It had a lot of padding and everything. So um, something went wrong. Imagine that. And the dogs began really attacking the stuntman and were so vicious that their teeth went through the stuntman's protective gear. Um, they even ignored their trainer when ordered to stop. The stuntman did survive, but it was really, really brutally injured. And these are like really trained. Yeah. Dogs. Like, you know that's what just I mean? unreal. Yeah. Oh, next. <laughs> Still in the same movie, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> in order to get some aerial shots for a film the crew hired a local small plane so at the very last minute the aircraft company changed plans and they rented the plane to another group of people one story says it was these businessmen from overseas and they basically like i'll give this pilot more money if you'll take us instead of these other people well <laughs> um the omen crew um we're told that they were going to have to wait until the next day to get their aerial shots. Well, they ended up being lucky because that plane crashed uh, because it supposedly flew into a flock of birds upon takeoff and everyone died. Oh, gee. What's with all the animals? Right? That's crazy. Yes. Yes. Uh, so... But it says that, um, I'm, I'm sorry, it says that it varies how many people die, but there were definitely deaths involved with it. So how weird, like, it's, it's like flying into, like, with a flock of seagulls, like, it's just weird, yeah. like, right? Like, it's, uh, yeah, very strange. It's very bizarre. Very, very. All right. So we have another stuntman <laughs> situation. Oh, geez. So when a stunt, when um, stuntman Alf Joint was done filming scenes for The Omen, Alf? he went back. Yeah, I don't know if it's maybe uh Alfred. <laughs> maybe I just picture yeah. Alf. I the don't alien. think it's that Alf. This is before right. that Alf, but <laughs> <laughs> I've just never just... heard anybody actually go by Alf. I've always Either. heard Alfred or Alfie. <laughs> it, maybe it's um, you know, maybe it's that like Roland um doe. <laughs> maybe like, I don't want to be named, just call me Alf. Yeah. Alf joints. But I it's actually it. like, I don't know, some other combination. Yeah. The the letters. It's like, oh, you but just it, scrambled them. <laughs> but this stuntman, um, he went to go work on a bridge. Um, and he's like, oh, well, this will be far from the curse to follow me. This is like somewhere way far away. But this is and another so, bridge. Another like that bridge. Lady that was decapitated. Yeah. And so he, um, his, his gig was to jump off of a tall building and land on the airbag. You know, we've seen that stunt a million okay. times, yeah, right? Yeah, that should be super easy peasy. Yeah, especially for a skilled stuntman um, as our friend Alf. So something he had done, he, he said a million times, no issue, easy money, fine. This time, however, he jumped in an awkward way and landed on the ground and not the pad. He was sen- seriously injured. He was rushed to the hospital, but he survived, thank God. And he said when he regained consciousness, he felt like he had been pushed. Although no proof of his claim was ever found, the fact that he jumped suddenly in an unusual way could mean he was telling the truth. Because he said, I would have never jumped that way. I've done it a million times. That's crazy. Um, how far did he fall, did you say? It, I, didn't, I didn't find it, but it's, hmm. I mean, it wouldn't take much. Yeah, I mean, even just off a normal, like, one-story roof, you could still really get hurt. Exactly. And it's, it is at a tall building. 
Yeah, so, I'm assuming it was a few stories. Yes. So, but he said he just felt like he was pushed. So, I guess the curse followed him. He wasn't so safe. Ooh. All right. So, back to Gregory Peck. So, in June of 1975, Gregory Peck's son, Jonathan, was found to have shot himself in the head. Although there was no note, his death was ruled a suicide, and Peck was obviously devastated at the loss. So his agent brought this role to him, Richard Thorne, the dad in The Omen, um, since he wanted, he thought that it would be a good way for him to channel his grief Mm. in this project, because this is a dad that, you know, has to basically kill his antichrist son so he thought it would be a good role for him um so he obviously arrived on the set and he was you know distraught because of what he just don't know if that's a really healthy way to do it i don't know that it is either (laughs) it seems seems like he's kind of exploiting (laughs) maybe the agent can make some money because isn't it called acting for a reason right supposed to be like like i'm about to digress but all that 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 crap about like oh, I did this role and it changed me because I went yeah. to this dark side. It's like, you're not supposed to become the Joker or like the serial killer. Like exactly. you're supposed to act like it. Well, this kind of bothered me too because I'm like, if he's already dealing with something this traumatic, like should he really be playing like yeah, this role? It's, like, it's I like like exploitation. it's very cruel. But you know, whatever. He did it. I'm sure the agent got paid well. <laughs> Poor Gregory probably had to endure even more uh, trauma. Yeah. But um. So uh, he powered through, he did it, um, and it said that The Omen actually was his most financially successful film he ever, he ever did. Um, so William Holden, on the other hand, had also been offered the part of Richard Thorne, but he turned it down, and when he saw how successful the film had been, he quickly jumped on board for the second Omen. <laughs> there, so there is an Omen chief. Oh, so there is a sequel yeah, and a remake. A sequel. And okay. a remake. I've never seen the original Omen. I've never seen the Omen too. I haven't seen the remake. So. Oh, really? I, I liked the original. It's good. Yeah. I love Gregory Peck. I think he, I loved him as Atticus Finch. I think he's a yeah. phenomenal actor. I haven't seen the Omen in a few years, though. So as you're saying some of these scenes, it's I'm like, kind of oh, coming yeah. back. I kind of remember yeah. some of that. Yeah. So if this isn't cre- creepy enough for you, the real life Guilford uh, Cathedral, which was filmed I guess in this film a lot it served as a it was a basically a very prominent backdrop right in the film but after the omen was released the priest had trouble getting people to come to mass <laughs> and after the building um after the building sent Damien in a terrible rage apparently the local congregation was like just like I don't want to be a part of that like that's freaked me out too bad I don't want to go there. And so um, their fear was still active more than 30 years later, because in 2008, an armed man was spotted on the church grounds and police were called. Helicopters were brought in and eventually the man was shot and killed by the authorities on the same damn cathedral steps that appeared in the movie. Oh, but hey, that's his right, right? To carry a gun. Yeah, that's right. That's his I'm, right. I'm being sarcastic if you don't know that. Um, yeah, yeah. That, and can I just say about the really omen real crazy. quick? I mean, maybe like if abortion rights, Damien wouldn't have been born. I literally said that at the end of the last episode. I was like, if there is an antichrist, the Supreme Court justices really want it to be born. I mean, I'm just saying, just saying. If that, you knew you were about to give birth to the antichrist, would you abort it? Or just give it on to like these people and let all this shit happen and then you have to kill him anyway yeah no yeah so so well just saying the, the the omen. pipe and smoke it that's right that's right all right so there's more <laughs> robert um also the called doll. no no he's not in this one <laughs> Not Not Robert, the doll. Robert <laughs> Munger, um, they call Rebecca Lothian Bob, he was a born-again Christian, and he's an executive who thought a movie about the Antichrist would be a good idea. See, this is so relevant for today, I'm just going to say. So he pitched this idea to the studio, knowing that Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist had just come out. They were wildly successful, right? And so producer um, Harvey Bernhardt agreed the idea would be a moneymaker and signed on to make it. Then, in either a change of opinion or thanks to some um, heavenly intervention, Munger, who is Bob Munger, the business executive, began warning everyone that the movie would be cursed. 
So like he brought it to them. They said, yeah, this is great. We'll do it. And then he's like, oh, but it could be cursed. What did he have like an epiphany from Jesus or I something? Have no idea. Like, this is um so this is fault. so this is what he claimed. This is what he said. And this is where I told you to put a pin in it earlier. Mm-hmm. It says, um, he so Bob said, if the devil's greatest single weapon is to be invisible and you're gonna do something which is gonna take away his invisibility to millions of people, he's not gonna want that to happen. Okay. Like I think I did a horrible he way of saying that. that on some episode where it's like the the devil's best secret is making people think he doesn't exist or whatever. exactly yeah you did yeah. so that's why i was like it's gonna come full circle so that's why he thinks the movie is haunted and has so many curses so it i mean maybe makes sense but i don't know to me if the devil doesn't want people to know he exists and he knows you're making a movie about him why would he also further add to that hey it's also cursed by the devil <laughs> you know what i, I mean? know i don't or, know there you go maybe i'm just like i think he's misrepresented he's he's not happy about their take on him and he's like no i would have you know like you misrepresented me i'm mad i didn't even like sign off on my story like mm -mm, i don't want this film to happen devil was misrepresented and that is the story of the omen and you know maybe the devil was like this is what happens when you force when you take away reproductive rights and- he, he was just he was being a diva he was like <laughs> uh-uh i didn't say that i wanted my story that represented that way i didn't say this, that this i didn't is do not that how i saw this going down at no. all you misrepresented me <laughs> you think my you you think my minion would look like that no i mean named damien no what, what the hell is wrong no. with you guys absolutely not <laughs> oh my gosh so anyway so you know bob the one that brought the idea up your producer bernard bernhard said yes we'll do it and all of a sudden bob's like no don't do it like it could be cursed well bernhard's like no we're gonna do it like we're pushing through even though the strange events started occurring he was like look you know what we're um he was said that he wore a cross on set all the time just in case (laughs) but he was like we're still gonna do it all right two more things (laughs) we're still on the omen guys we're still talking about the omen this is nuts this is insane so um so you know many child actors will continue working into adulthood right but um, Harvey Stevenson, little Damien, um, just kind of disappeared off the planet after this. So I mean, we don't couldn't know that be just because he was a child actor? And we know how horrible been, that goes. Or, from- could it have, or could it have been a curse? Oh, okay. After appearing in a 1980 made-for-television movie, he didn't take any film roles until a small part in the remake of The Omen. In fact... He retreated so far out of view, the producer of an Omen documentary had to hire a private investigator to track him down for an interview. Apparently, playing the role of Damien affected several other actors, too. Omen um, 2's Jonathan Scott Taylor worked briefly as a stage actor, but quit to work for a trucking business in Australia and may have changed the same. Even Sam Neill, who played an adult Damien in Omen 3, refuses to talk about his time spent making the film. That, okay. See, that that makes me almost want to take on the role of the next Damien, just to see, like, what the hell happened to you guys? Okay, so one more bullet point on the Omen, and we're moving on to our other three movies <laughs> that are not nearly as haunted as this one. <laughs> So despite all the rumors of the original Omen was cursed, Hollywood's like, hey, let's remake it in 2006. <laughs> like, why not? That sounds like so, something Hollywood would do. <laughs> sounds very Hollywood. So although not quite as creepily or deadly as the original curse, the production did encounter some questionable problems. While filming, uh, Father Brannon, who the actor, I'm, and I'm so sorry, Pete, I'm going to mess up your name, is Pete. Pasolati's brother, anyway, okay, died unexpectedly after he allegedly received three sixes in a poker game. 
he mysteriously died after yes. that. Yes. So they don't know the cause of death. They don't know. That's really weird. That really is creepy. Yes, I agree. I was like, what? <sighs> it's alleged, but anyway. So also creepy with the remake in 2006, 13,500 feet of film, which was included, um, which included an important scene, um, which Liv Schreiber finds the devil's birthmark on his son, was mysteriously destroyed while being processed in the lab. So did they have to reshoot it or just leave it out? So I don't know. It says no one can explain what happened. Even a documentary exploring the curse of the omen in all its various formed um, stuff, some strange events when two cameras in two separate locations also experienced the same technical difficulties. So you had two cameras shooting two different locations had the exact same technical difficulty. So you had problems with cameras. You had this 13,500 feet of important film just can't find anywhere. So even though it wasn't as crazy as the original, I think some weird stuff definitely happened. I wonder if it even could have been a person. Maybe. Like Like, trying to like make first like maybe. But I want to find this documentary that explores this curse of the omen. Yeah, that that sounds like a good movie. I think so too. I love a good documentary. I have to say, like, I understand, like, weird stuff happens, but this one is... Especially the first one, the original. Like, yeah. That's weird. What do you think? I think this one, for real, has some creepy shit going on. I think it's even more cursy than the poltergeist films. I think so, too. I think so, too. And it surprised me. I mean, I've heard of The Omen. I've seen bits and pieces. I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not super familiar with like watching it, but I'm kind of scared. <laughs> I remember <laughs> mom, when it first came out, she said it was like one of the scariest movies she had ever seen. I believe it. And I mean, and all I kind of laughed at that, but like at the time, I think it probably was. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know though. Sometimes the older ones like that, I think are more scary than the newer ones. Yeah. I don't know. Well, see, I hate all the CGI crap. Maybe that's it too. Like it just seems more raw, like Hitchcock. Yeah, and I like you know. I don't know. Classic gore makeup monsters. Yeah, like a person in, in a suit. Like, give me the classics. Like, um, yeah, I have Evil to Dead. Agree. Like, come on. Like, some of that makeup is the scariest damn makeup I've ever seen. That's insane. So, on our second movie, we agree. Yeah, we think there's a curse there. There's something weird going on there. Either there's a serial killer on set. <laughs> Yeah. Or like serial sabotager that's like true. really something freaking weird going on i really want to see the documentary about that man but i just think that would be a really good a good one to watch so yeah i mean that's right. the only other explanation i have is that there's just somebody that was on set and made all this stuff happen or it's a curse yeah agreed that's a really interesting theory i like it all right you ready for movie number three yeah the exorcist which i thought tied in really nice to your story last week yes (laughs) so if you haven't listened to last week's story adele talks about the exorcism of roland doe and uh, his uh this exorcism is what um this movie the exorcist is i would say loosely based off of see now that's really funny if this one's cursed because it really sounded to me like this kid was not possessed I was thinking that same thing. Like we were like, this kid's a shit ass. He's not cursed, but the damn movie is. So yeah, he was I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the facts, and you tell me. We'll see what you think. So uh, my uh, sources for The Exorcist were www.thethings.com, which is a good one. Mm-hmm. But just to give you, if you haven't seen The Exorcist, you don't know what we're talking about, here's just a, a, a little synopsis of it. So this is a 1973 flick starring Linda Blair as a young girl possessed by the devil, and it's considered by many to be the scariest movie of all time. Even the special effects seem quite simple by today's standards we were talking about, but it was still, you know, terrifying. So um, the basically the plot is, the, basically it's the exorcism of this one girl that um 
Reagan. Yep, yeah. Reagan. And uh, you probably, if you know anything about this movie, you're probably just seeing the part when you know she's throwing up the split pea soup. <laughs> so that's probably the part that most she's like people levitating and yes. she has like this horrible like low voice. Well, I just sounded like a smoker or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, did. she has like this crazy like old man low voice, and she's just gross and like just being vile and disgusting and offensive. Exactly, you know, like the devil. Like, the, if, like unless Damien. he's being misrepresented. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. But um, so basically, it's exactly what Adele says. This little girl, she gets possessed. Her name is Reagan, and uh, she's possessed by the de- devil. And then her mom does obviously everything she can to try to save her daughter. So again, classic scenes. The split pea suit. The crew working on The Exorcist believe that the set was cursed because lots of suspicious events took place both on the set and in the lives of the people associated with the movie. So on one occasion, the set burned down and had to be reconstructed again. See, there again, um, that could easily have been a person. It could what if it was some crazy right wing right. person that was like, if you make this movie, it's going to make the devil popular and then Satan, you know, but satanic we panic is just going to spread. Down. We have to burn we the set. Burn it down. It could have just been an electrical thing. No, I think it was a crazy right wing person. It was a crazy, or it could have <laughs> been a curse. Or it was the devil himself. So. The next one we're going to cover ties into uh, the story that I did the week before you. So this would number four would be the Amityville Horror. And this one comes from my source is www.fascinate.com. And guys, I'm really underwhelmed by how not Mm. cursed I feel like this one is. Did they film the movie in the actual house or was that a set? So set. set. Um, I figured, but was just kind of curious. If you'll recall, the DeFeo family, uh, if you didn't listen to the to my to our, my story I did on Amityville, I was going to give you a quick synopsis. So the DeFeo family, the killings took place 3.15 a.m., son murders his entire family, and um, then the Lutz family, George and his family, move in afterwards. And if you'll recall, George would wake up at 3.15 every morning. That's the time that the Shafaya family was killed. Well, um, supposedly, um, crew, multiple crew members also would wake up at 3.15, including Ryan Gosling. Or, I'm sorry, Ryan Reynolds. I was Ryan. like, Ryan Gosling was in that? <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, wrong Ryan. Um, that um, he also, so when they did the remake, he also had that same thing happen where they would wake up. There's something about the three fifteen. So I don't know. I don't sometimes know. randomly wake up around that time too. Yeah. So that was that was something. Um, so when James Broylan was offered the role of George Lutz, so this is the original film, the original 1973 film, he asked if he could read a script because he um, because the one hadn't been written yet. He picked up a copy of Anson's book, The Amityville Horror. And if you'll recall, Anson was friends with the Lutz family. They made the book. The book becomes the movie, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, it, it said that um, when James read the book, he couldn't put it down. He finished it in one sitting. And at one point, a pair of pants he had hung up earlier fell on the floor as he was reading a particularly climactic part of the story. He jumped right out of his chair and said he has to do this film. I don't think that's really See, it. I imagined him already in character with his tidy whities and no pants <laughs> reading it. And he's like, oh, I was born to play this role. <laughs> this Maybe that's it. really what happened. That was a sign. That was my omen. <laughs> that was not a curse. Movie. That was a sign that you need to take this role. <laughs> you not wear pants, pants in the movie. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I was like, okay. And then um, Melissa George, who played Kathy Lutz in the Amity Full Horror remake, um, said that during the downtime on the set that she had a lot of supernatural experiences happen to her from the full body chills she got from the first time she saw the set of the home to the curious icy cold patch that followed her around the home after hearing Kathy Lutz had died. Mm, okay, well, that could be something. Yeah. Playing Maybe. her. She's playing her. Did she ever meet her? Do we know? I don't know. Much yeah worse. i don't know that, that, that could be supernatural that could be something yeah i think so too i don't know if it would necessarily be a curse but maybe like just a like a, yeah a haunting. Or a visitation. a haunting i would 
say this is a haunting, not a curse. The pant thing, I just think is ironic. <laughs> I just think that was, he. Mm, I think, no, I think they just fell. I don't know. Like the air conditioner kicked she on kicked and his pants on. fell. Yes. It scared the shit out of him, probably. But That's what it did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, get ready for this. <laughs> so then my last bullet point here is when the 2005 film began shooting. Now, this is probably the most creepy thing. A body of a fisherman washed ashore on the set. And um, if that certainly that set a kind of eerie tone for the film, um, none of the crew left the job after that. Surprised because they were like, this kind of set the tone. So if anything weird happens, I this is how we kind of started. Have seen Ryan Reynolds' reaction to that? <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, but yeah, and they said that um, you know maybe it was just a, a coincidence or was it supernatural? They don't know. I think that's more of, I don't know, that just seems kind of, this one seems more haunting to me than it does curse. And, but the body, that is really weird. Like, that's just bad timing. That's just creepy, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but it is creepy. Um, just a funny aside, uh, whenever we were in Florida visiting dad last, um, who reminds us of the original guy that played, you know, the dad. And James Angel. Boylan. Yeah. Um, some commercial came on with Ryan Reynolds and he totally got him mistaken with David Hasselhoff. Like, how do you mix those two up? First of all? He was like, Oh, doesn't he have a bad drinking problem? And his daughter was like begging him. I was like, his daughter's like a toddler. Like, are you thinking of David? Ha-? He was like, yeah, he was really drunk and eating that cheeseburger. I was like, that's David Hasselhoff. It's not Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> dad's like ryan reynolds is like probably my age yeah he's like maybe 40 like david hasselhoff is like your age dad like and that happened years ago with the hamburger (laughs) anyway he thought uh, thought tom hanks was the comedian he thought he was jim carrey yeah he's like you know that funny guy the wise guy you know tom hanks tom hanks it's like like, no calm dramatic actor like what Mm -hmm. you know I'm Sandler's type. <laughs> Sandler. <laughs> Adam Sandler's. Oh, shout out to you, Dad. <laughs> Even though you're who, do, who does not that. listen to the show. I don't oh, yeah, think he listens. Yeah. I don't think he understands what podcasts are. <laughs> yeah. No. But um, so what do you think about this one? Yeah, I, I say haunting. I think we're definitely more haunted eerie. I don't really feel like curse. I think the only say. thing was maybe, you know the lady like i think that was maybe i wouldn't even say a haunting but a visitation yeah that's probably true because she didn't say it was a bad thing i think it was just like hey i'm here and i acknowledge that you're doing this yeah or it was just cold wind i don't know at at the most it was a visitation yeah i agree so um you ready for number five can i take a guess yes is it passion of the christ no, I was okay. gonna do that one, but I changed it. I, I just saw it because of the lightning. Okay. Yeah, I, no I, I was gonna do that one, but this one took me back. And Ooh, it's a big business. No. <laughs> what if that um, was that would be weird. okay. Anyway. <laughs> and I was so fascinated by this. And I was I was doing my research. Steven's like, you never knew about that? I was like, no, like I didn't. Okay, are you ready? Yes. This one's three men and a baby oh yeah you know about it too there's like I've a never ghost heard in a of it. yes yeah so i had never heard of this and my source for this story is crberryauthor.com and so i did not know that a ghost of a little boy makes a brief appearance in this 80s comedy three men and a baby but apparently though this is the story okay and we're gonna we'll dissect it So apparently this little boy, this ghost boy, used to live in the apartment where they filmed. And then the story goes, he committed suicide with a shotgun. Wait, he's a little boy? Yeah. Like, like define what age range is a little boy? Maybe seven, eight. A seven-year-old committing suicide. That's that's what they say. But I'm calling bullshit on that. Put a pin in it. 
Okay. Going back to it. So Danson, so Ted Danson's character's mom entered the room um, where the this film, where basically this baby is like the, the actual baby in the movie is sleeping, right? And then there you can see like a black silhouette that resembles a shotgun in the window of the background. I've never mm. noticed this. And so I think after this is a the point to make people watch this movie. Well, after the mother like cradles the baby, they kind of head out of the room. And then all of a sudden you see the figure of a young boy in that same window where the shotgun appeared behind the curtains. So urban legend says that three men and baby was released on so three men and the baby was released on VHS, right? And so before the release of the sequel, which was Three Men and a Little Lady, the um, people started noticing this, right? And so it this, basically... I'm sorry. Th- this and around the same time of seeing these things, it- it's almost like that crap that people were like, uh, oh, there's all these hidden hidden messages in Disney movies. <laughs> like, if you look really closely, like, you see this and that. It's like, pretty much like that. But anyway, as you can imagine, like, all these stories start, like, springing up everywhere about this dead boy and his appearance in the movie. And there were claims that the boy's parents had sent, um, had moved out of the apartment and they were threatening to sue Disney if they didn't remove the scene. Oh, and it's a Disney movie. Yeah, it is. A That's Disney interesting. Movie. Okay. <laughs> but, okay, this is what Disney says. So, Disney's Touchstone Pictures division released the movie and they said it wasn't a ghost of a dead boy at all. It was a cardboard cutout of Ted Danson. <laughs> <laughs> and another rather damning piece of evidence against this theory about this little boy in the shotgun is that this was this was filmed in a studio in Toronto. It wasn't filmed in an apartment anywhere. So it looked like on the set. <laughs> so now some people still say that troublestone pictures and (laughs) that's going to be our production studio because we're only going to produce cursed films it's going to be troublestone (laughs) troublestone the stormy willow production (laughs) trademark it trademark (laughs) Because everything we produce is going to be cursed, haunted, or fucked up. It's a yeah, stuff. just a bunch oh, no, of trouble. And we'll do like the same things. It don't even have a lightning with touch stuff. Yeah, like the. <laughs> but ours will strike. Ours will strike someone or a plane. Yeah, oh, it's fucked up. But yeah, it'll be like a plane. We're going straight to hell. Anyway, we good thing we have the devil's back in this. Maybe episode. we'll take maybe we'll take a stab at depicting the devil. But is this what you were thinking? <laughs> Like, how do you feel life. about this wardrobe? What about just go easy on the signs? But like, what do you think about this? Like, this like, is tell us your perspective. Do you like who we cast? <laughs> is he good looking enough? Oh, it's a woman. Okay, well, let's do it. Yeah, wait. <laughs> or are you gender neutral? Or like, you know, we're open. We're open minded. Yeah, totally. We're totally. You know, it's probably like a sweet old lady. We're not. That's, we don't judge. We're not yeah. judging. We're open minded. Here, listen, here tell us in a constructive way that doesn't end us and we will represent you here at troublestone that's what we do best <laughs> <laughs> so again <clears throat> take two so touchstone um so people are saying that touchstone pictures basically um they're lying to cover it up <laughs> and they say that the cutouts are plainly uh, the cutouts of Ted Danson clearly aren't the same image as the little boy that appears on the VHS. So they're like, you're lying, Touchstone. You're feeding us lies. We're not buying it. So I'm what do sorry. You it, it's VHS. Do you know how shitty the resolution is on VHS? I know you youngsters that are probably all listening to our show. Like, it is so <laughs> pixelated and shitty. Like, no. Like, you would not be able to tell from that grainy picture. Like, no. <laughs> So I'm I'm calling BS on this one. Yeah. I'm calling this one an urban legend for sure. So, but I love, I love the whole cover up theory. I feel like these are also the same people that are probably Trump supporters. Like you're lying. Right. Like I'm just saying. I didn't just lose. Seems, you lost. What do you yeah. mean? I scored more points than you. No, you didn't. This, this is not a cut off, a little cut up or cut out of Ted Dead. Cut up. It's cut up. Of it. <laughs> 
It's not your 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 Tim is showing. It you is. Start doing I, it this, is. Like wiggling your finger. Like, you know, like Tim is know. our dad, by the way. Yeah, Timmy is showing. Yeah. So let's recap: five movies. Culture guys, go. Maybe cursed. Okay, Omen. Hella cursed. Yeah. Um, The Exorcist. Somebody funny on set and some misfortunes. I agree. Amityville Horror? Nothing. Maybe a visitation. Three men and a baby. A bad movie and not haunted or paranormal in any way. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go to do Good night, sweetheart. All right, and that's the end of the show, guys. <laughs> no, it's not because I actually have some tips for you. Oh, so do you? I want it's- you to know. Yeah, through what? Like not pissing off the devil when I make a movie about him? No, but I'm going to tell you productions. You might want to be like, "How do I know if I'm cursed?" So I'm going to give you some signs that if you're experiencing them, you may be cursed. Okay. Okay. And this comes from themindjournal.com, and these are just seven things you might want to watch for. Number one, that's a godly number. (laughs) (laughs) Is it? Is the, the the ending? Give your heart. To Jesus. Damn it, Adele, stop. You keep <laughs> spoiling it. Spoiling all my stuff. <laughs> Number one, finding scary stuff on your house. Number two. Wait, what does that mean? Like a snake? strange symbols. Things that might make you scared because sometimes but, the curse on you, they want you to be scared. So like maybe you find something that's scary to you, like a doll or something weird. Like, ah, oh, I don't like okay. that. Okay. Number two, strange symbols on your house. Okay, that could be vandalism, though. Number three, missing photos from your house. Who has photos anymore? Isn't everything Mm -hmm. online? Oh, other than you, other than you, you do nothing. That could be that could be hard though. Now that we're online, people could just like copy and paste a picture of you. But it's a little scary. Think about it. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. (laughs) Number four. Are you missing any undergarments? Now that's just a pervert breaking into your fucking house and being a creep. You know how many, so let's read podcast plugging you. I love that one. And it's so many creepy stories just about like creepy ass people. And a lot of them are people like, oh, and then my underwear started going up, miss, you know, turning up missing. Well, I guess you can't turn up missing, but you know what I mean? <laughs> there it is. We're not new at Bungie. This is a, this is a cold case. <laughs> <laughs> the tale of the missing panties this is the cold case that they're still out there I'll yeah. them back. they're gonna turn up <laughs> missing <laughs> all right number five unidentified spilled liquids <laughs> i see that still sounds like a pervert <laughs> number six way. Okay. Um, this one this one's bad random pain that's just getting old i have <laughs> number so seven many... okay then i guess i'm cursed like number <laughs> number seven healthy house plants are all of a sudden getting sick for no good reason okay mm, anyway, so if you want to know what all this means go to mindjournal.com now if you do think that you really do have a curse i'm also going to tell you how you can remove that curse Go see a witch doctor. Maybe or maybe not. That didn't that didn't go well for the culture guys. That's true. <laughs> You're just fucked. So this is this is a way you can um you can remove a curse. And I know it's true because I found it on WikiHow. I thought Number you were gonna say because I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, a salt bath. So you want to use sea salt and baking soda, and you want to make sure that you use your hand to um wave counterclockwise until the salt and the baking soda dissolve then you want to you'll like this one since you're our mystic you want to visualize positive energy flowing into the bath three you want to recite a prayer or a spell before getting into the bath so one might be salt and water make me pure bring me now the preferred cure it always has to rhyme if it's witchy. It has to. Has of course. to. Has to. You. And number four, you want to soak for 30 to 40 minutes, allowing the water to cleanse you. 
So if you feel like you're cursed, there you go. If you you can maybe try this, maybe after you watch The Omen, you Actually, should maybe try that salt bath. <laughs> you know what's funny? Speaking of curses and the devil, I had a crazy dream the other week that um, mom got a curse on her oh, and no. um, we went to like a shaman and I was like, how can we remove this curse? And they were like, you can't, she has to die and, and face the devil. What? But this is where it gets weird. It was like, but the devil's going to try to scalp you. So wear a wig. And then whenever he grabs that wig, you can just run right out. And then you're like back. <laughs> what the fuck is that supposed to mean? What? You know what that sounds like? That sounds like a... Uh, I'm friends with the devil and he's giving me clues. For our next production piece. <laughs> We're going to make a movie about this, guys. How to oh trick the devil, wear a wig. <laughs> wear a wig. Wear a wig. Oh my yeah. gosh. So yeah, that that's my story on curses. And you're sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. All yeah, right. Well, you know what time it is. That was a good topic, but uh, let's see what we have for next week. So. Oh yeah. I love this. So many things. Yeah. In case this is your first time tuning in, one, welcome and thank you for listening. But two, we, at the end of the show, spin this wheel of paranormal topics to see what the theme will be for the next episode. So I'm going to shuffle the list. All right. Ready to spin? Do it. All right. Here we go. Oh, oh. Magic. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one that is a good one all right so my topic for next week is magic i can't oh, wait yeah Ooh. okay that'll be fun yes well um i hope you enjoyed the stories and yeah that was a good one mentioned to Dell um us do one a halloween pick like a 31 day uh movie list i think we should do it and uh, I think the omen's gonna make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's definitely do that. I'll start. I mean, I'm already. Hello, Halloween's my happy place, and I'm just going deep into that right now. Yes, yes. So I, I hope everybody's finding their happy place and and keeping your positivity going. Um, right. Find your joy, whatever it is. Yeah. No matter what goes on in the world, it's important to just take care of yourself and, you know. Stay as happy as you can, whatever keeps you going. Yes, surround yourself with positive people and just remember to check on people, see how they're doing because, you know, I think a lot of us aren't okay and it's okay not to be okay. This is a big deal. So make sure you've got a good um, support system there so you're not just kind of feeling like you're on the island and dealing with this alone because you're not alone. We're all right there with you, pissed, scared, sad, all the things. So, yeah. And hey, if you don't have a support network, reach out to us. We're here. We obviously like to talk. So, obviously. (laughs) And uh, hopefully, we can start connecting like minded people and uh, build a little community of our own. That would be amazing. Absolutely. Well, Adele, this has been another great episode. And thank you all for listening. And as we stay here, stay curious and stay safe. (laughs) Take care, you guys. Yeah, take care.